could actually hear the uh, snarling of the first boss, the vanguard, through this area right here. You can hear him right now. Very intimidating. You can kind of see him through this glossy fog. These fog gates are actually, um, they split up different parts of the level. They sort of act as, not really checkpoints, but they factor into sort of the multiplayer experience and stuff like that. Anyways, um, that's enough about that. So here we have the vanguard. Um, best thing to do against this guy is to stay behind him and also be very careful about his axe because it has a huge swiping range and it will take you out in one shot pretty much in most cases so you yeah, make sure you're careful when fighting this guy you have to always stay behind him when he does this where he flaps his wings uh, that's if you can get him in a cycle of doing that over and over again that is very suggested okay I was lucky there I wasn't supposed to go that way but um yeah, he flaps his wings but he's too flabby so he just comes back down to earth Again, not the smartest thing to do. I'm playing it very risky here. Okay. Oh, here he goes. You don't want to be close up when he does that, more or less. That's going to uh, get you in a lot of trouble. But if you can get him into a cycle of doing this, just going in, attacking twice, and then running out, it's a very effective strategy for defeating the Vanguard. So yeah, this guy is kind of a... Uh, more or less a mood setter for how the rest of the game is going to be. This is this is where the game explains to you it's not screwing around, it's going to kick your ass. It's going to kick it hard. <laughs> Luckily though, uh... Well, I'm not going to say anything. Because if I fail, I don't want to, uh... have it be because I got cocky and jinxed myself. luck. <laughs> oh god. Okay. What's he doing? Oh god. I don't like when he does that. He sort of starts to attack, but then he sweeps forward, or he sweeps to the side towards you. That is never a fun situation to be stuck in with the vanguard. But I believe we have just defeated him. Not too shabby. Alright. For our troubles, um, we get a secret archstone. Um, since you're not supposed to defeat that boss, if you die to him, you just go straight to the Nexus. But um, due to our victory in battle against him, we get to touch this archstone, warp to a new area. And you don't actually see this area unless you defeat the vanguard, and you don't get another chance to defeat him. You only get to go through that area once. If you fail, you just start off with the game. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell we're not in a good situation when you hear a roar like that. And as you can see, it's from the Dragon God. We saw this guy in the intro. He is a damned intimidating fellow. <laughs> so you have these two stairways. They both go down the same area, so... Doesn't matter which one you pick. Get some full moon grasses. Basically, this is just a little bonus area. It gives us a few items to start out our quest. So we get getting quite a few full moon grasses. Those are very useful healing items. Uh, they're one of the higher tier healing items. The only ones that are better than that are the new moon grasses and the dark moon grasses, which we will get into later. And then what we got back there, and what we just got here, we got back there sharp stone, shards of sharp stone, I believe. Those are used to upgrade weapons, shields, that kind of thing. And then with the, uh, the renowned soldier souls, those are just kind of miscellaneous souls. You have your inventory right here, and you can see 
these are basically the only way to save souls. Um, you can use them and then, let me just show it off right here. You use them and they go into your uh, little soul bank on the bottom right there. But uh, as soon as you do that, they're open to get um, taken away from you because when you die, you lose all of your souls. Sorry if the dragon is yelling over me. I'll stop explaining stuff in just a second, but yeah. Then we have Grey Demon Soul, uh, which tends to give you more souls than normal souls. Although, in some cases, that's not true, because the Grey Demon Soul is a very common demon soul. Or not common, but it's a very base demon soul, so you don't get a lot of souls out of it. But anyways, most of the time you want to keep demon souls, because they can be used to craft... Uh, unique weapons, or you can get spells, that kind of thing. Sorry I'm taking so long to explain stuff, let's go get killed. Basically, if the message didn't sink in from the, uh, Vanguard, Dragon God goes on ahead and gives you a personal trip to the Nexus. Like so. Minus the loading screen, you know. Old King Doran is a boss. from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. This is the Nexus. Together, the northern land of Boletaria. Thou canst not exit the Nexus, but each of the five arch stones will connect them to the You have died, and the Nexus has trapped your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. However, by capturing demon souls, you can reclaim your physical body. So basically, having died, we are now in soul form. What soul form does, it does a few things. Um, a bit of a cool little special effect, since we don't have any material form anymore. Although we have our soul form, we can still run around like this. We don't make sound. We don't make sound when we dodge roll. We don't make sound when we're running around, walking around, whatever. Although our, uh, our weapons will still make sound. So, so there's that, at least. Um, anyways... On to the more important differences. You can see at the top left there our health has been halved. Uh, we can find a ring that'll give us 25% um, of our health back when we're in soul form, so it'll only be a 25% loss. We'll still have 75% of our max health, but that's one of the uh, negative aspects of being in soul form. One of the positive aspects is that we do a greater deal of damage to enemies, so it makes things easier to kill, but at the same time it's also easier to get killed. Uh, anyways, as you can see, this is the Nexus. Uh, it's sort of this stronghold that most of the people who have escaped uh, the demons of Boletaria, or who have died like us, and ended up like this guy or me, um, they are more or less just trapped here until... Um, the colorless fog is swept past and Boltaria is safe again. That kind of thing. It's all very crazy and it's pretty interesting. Uh, the game is very subtle with its story, but there's a lot of it to be told from each area. Um, but yeah, let's go on ahead and talk to this guy. Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero. <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the archstones. Now go. 
go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed proletariat. So yeah, this guy's a bit of a sour puss. Um, but he explains to us that these arch stones, these very tall, towering rocks, uh, they take us to the different worlds in Boletaria. Uh, right now, though, we can only go to that first one that he pointed to, uh, the Boletarian Palace. You automatically just have to go there at first, because all the other ones are sealed like this. So, um... Around the Nexus, there are a few different areas that you should be able to mark for yourself as the game goes on. This area is where the mages and spellcasters will appear, um, and then on the other side is where the miracle casters and just kind of the de devout, faithful, god-worshipping people are. And uh, there's kind of a split between spell casting and miracle casting, and we'll get into that later, but for right now it isn't important. Anyways, you can read messages. Um, this is an online aspect of the game. When you're online, um, the game sort of implements a multiplayer aspect into the single player. It just kind of meshes together perfectly. It's very well done multiplayer. But um, you can see messages can be left on the ground by people, and that one in particular is just sort of a request for people to recommend the message. What this does when you recommend a message, like, uh, let me see if I can do this. Um, you can write messages by pressing the select button, or you can recommend messages. And by doing so, um, their rating will increase by one. It's not showing it right now, but basically whenever that person comes online, they will get a full health boost. I honestly don't find the use in it, because most of the time, the only time that my messages are recommended are after I log off, and then when I log on, even though I still have full health, I get a full health boost, so... Most of the time, messages aren't your best friends. They don't help you a whole lot. Then the other online aspect uh, is bloodstains. Bloodstains show you these red, wispy, spirit-type people uh, of um, you know other players about 10 seconds before their death. In that case, that guy was committing suicide, which is something some people do to make their character tendency reach uh, pure black, which allows you to do certain things in the game. Um, there's just crazy stuff with the tendencies, like on the top left you can see our character tendency is sort of halfway between light and dark. It starts out as neutral for all characters, and then on the top right you can see um, the world tendency, and if we go into the menu screen, we can also see the world tendencies for each world. So say the Boletarian Palace, it's looking pretty close to pure white, which means that we'll be able to do pure white events in that world. Just very crazy system with all this stuff. So anyways... You're new here? Do you hear from my services? Talk to some of the NPCs. My name's Baldwin. Just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons, or forge ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. And with my weapons... You can go on living. Not a bad deal, huh? So this is Baldwin the Blacksmith. He is a very useful character. He repairs your equipment when it gets degraded, and that can be very nice. Uh, apparently I can fix my wooden shield for zero souls. Thanks! But, um, yeah, basically Baldwin is one of the NPCs that you can buy items from. Um, you can see here that uh, souls serve as the currency in uh, the land of Boletaria. The reason for this is because without souls, um, characters eventually go mad. This isn't something that's actually impl implemented, but it's a very interesting aspect of how, uh, how these people have sort of become dependent on souls uh, throughout their time as uh, you know, the place became more corrupted with demons and you know, souls became kind of this huge thing. But uh, anyways, something we can do is upgrade weapons. I'm actually going to save the Shards of Sharpstone, but this is just the upgrading uh, area where you can sort of see what you can do with all of your weapons. For instance, you know, with the dagger, I could probably level it up twice with the Shards of Sharpstone. You also have to pay a nominal fee of a few souls, but usually it's such a small price in the long run that it doesn't matter too much. Anyways, we're not going to do any of that. But we will chat Baldwin up a little bit. Perhaps you've already had, but there's another blacksmith at the entrance of Stonefang Mine. 
He's an eccentric old man, but he knows his trade well. He's the only sane one left in a town of soul-starved men. Now, if you do meet him... Yeah, well, forget it. That stomach on near the well will just ignore you. I have to say, I love the voice actor for Blacksmith Baldwin. He's just very snarky and sarcastic, and I don't know, I really like his character. There aren't enough blacksmiths in this temple to handle all the work. Only certain ores can be used to forge weapons, but you just have to make do. And be thankful that I'm still of good health. But yeah, that's Blacksmith Baldwin. We're not gonna... Do come back alive! I need your business. We're not gonna do anything else with him. He... He will be very useful throughout the game, but right now we don't have a lot that we need to do with him. So let's go on ahead and talk to Stockpile Thomas, one of the coolest characters in the game. I'm Stockpile Thomas. When the scourge came, I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here, in the Nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. So yes, uh, Stockpile Thomas is a very, very useful character. You will learn to love this guy. Primarily because he holds anything that you don't want to hold. And as you can see, we do have an item burden. As well as an equip burn, but those are two completely different things that I will explain when the time comes. But anyways, he basically keeps your personal inventory less cluttered, and he keeps all of the stuff that you've gathered on your journeys in one convenient place. So I'll just put away most of this stuff. Also, we got the Nexial Binding. I didn't explain this, and I apologize for not explaining it earlier, but upon entering the Nexus, we got this, and uh, more or less it functions just as an easy way to get back to the Nexus if you're in bad shape. Really though, not many people use it, because at, at the price of returning to the Nexus, you also have to uh, give up all the souls that you've collected. So in general, it's not really worth it to use this thing. It's better just to die, get your blood stain back, and get all the souls back. Which probably sounds confusing, so... <laughs> Again, it's better to just explain the stuff as it comes. Um, sorry if I'm getting a bit a bit ahead of myself. Rest assured, your goods are safe and sound with me. So that's Best of luck to you. Me. So that's Stockpile Thomas. He's a really nice guy. He has a bit of a sad backstory, and uh, in general, he's he's pretty fancy, I have to say. So let's talk to him a little bit. When the scourge came, I abandoned my wife and daughter and fled like a madman. When I came to, I was in the Nexus. I haven't dared venture outside these walls since. I wish I could do more, but I am ignorant of the world beyond these walls. That candle maiden cared for me during my first days in the Nexus. She says very little, but has a kind heart. She's just the age my young daughter would have been. The poor, poor girl, trapped here with her eyes occluded by wax. If only something could be done to help her. Alright, I think that's all. If only some. Yeah, that's all he has to say. Best of luck to you. So yeah, um, Stockpile Thomas, Baldwin the Blacksmith, and this guy, he doesn't really have a name, he's just sort of a lost soul who's given up. He's just sitting here, being lazy. You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? Ugh. It's all the same. You're just another prisoner of the Nexus. We're welcome here, as long as we keep slashing at demons. <laughs> So yeah, um, sorry this has been a very slow episode, this is sort of just an introduction to the Nexus. It's a very big place, lots of stuff to explore, a few items to pick up, we'll probably be doing that throughout the game, but anyways, yeah. Um, next time, I suppose, uh, the only thing we have left to do so far, I think we've done most of what we can do in here, so next time we're going to visit the Bulletarian Palace and we will begin our first real level of the game before things really start up. 
Um, so I hope you've been enjoying this LP so far. I'll stop saying that after this episode. I keep repeating myself, but... Yeah, I do hope this ends up being a pretty good LP. Um, it, it's a bit of a slow start, I have to admit, but um, the game does pick up. It has some very beautiful environments, some very tough bosses, and some crazy happenings. I'm going to show off as much as I can. I can't promise I'll be able to manipulate the world tendencies to the extent that I'll be able to show off every single fancy thing in the game, but... I'll show off as much as I know about the game, and I'll try and make this entertaining for all you guys. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and uh, next time we will be in the Bulletarian Palace. So, goodbye. <laughs>